Souls for Jesus, um, Diane Studer went to Ethiopia years ago and just on a missions trip and she just noticed so many people on bare feet. Found out that one in five people don't have shoes that live in Africa. So she just came back with a passion in her heart to do something. So she left her job uh, and she has 22 states, it's 22, could be more now that she has representatives. And you just ask people to go into their closets and take out pairs of shoes that they're not using anymore. And obviously high heels don't really translate, but practical shoes, sneakers, flats, anything that's not so bad that you're cutting the grass with them, but ones that obviously somebody could use that you're just no longer using. And she has drop off boxes and drop off places. So I got to know Diane, she's located here in the Milwaukee area. Got to know her and got involved and actually went on a trip and our team collects shoes and we've gone over to the warehouse to help sort them. So really the organization, they send, they pack 8,000 pairs of shoes in a shipment that they send. And I think they have over 100,000 pairs in three years that they've sent over. So it's about making right contacts and she'll take a team once a year over there just to be physically, I mean, can't be there all the time when the shoes are delivered but she likes to be there at least once a year to the different countries and deliver the shoes. So last year, Mozambique was a new area. So we went as a team and we delivered, I think about 3,000 of the 8,000 pairs to the different villages. The moment is pulling up and seeing the line of people that have been there for hours waiting to get a pair of shoes. So is it, well, let me take, they will be waiting in the church for you and they're there to celebrate and they're singing. I mean, the music and the dancing is, you might see it in some of the videos, and it's just unbelievable. They're so full of joy and they're dancing and they're excited. And then we introduce ourselves and then Diane gives a brief message. So the way that it goes, they, the elders take everyone out and they line people up according to the greatest need. Now we have nothing to do with it, they know. So they put it in from the greatest need to who they think maybe everybody's in need, but they go from the most desperate and then they'll ask the, the women of the village who are maybe the, I mean, again, I don't know all this stuff, but the, the older women come then it's the children, and then it's the teens, and then the men are usually left for last. Um, and they come in the door, and we measure their feet, and we wash their feet. And then after we wash their feet, somebody else from the team. So there's a team measuring, a team washing, and a team getting a pair of shoes. So if you were on my team, and you would measure and say, okay, nine women. They'd bring them to me, I'd wash their feet. Then we'd get Megan to go get nine women's out of the pile. So we put each pile of shoes in an area so it's just really easy to go and get it. And then we give them their shoes. And the whole point of washing is to be servants. To say, you know, Jesus was the greatest servant that walked the earth. And he washed his disciples' feet. So we've come here to serve you. And we've had some really interesting, you talk about reactions. We've had really interesting reactions. People are like, no, no, you shouldn't wash our feet. It's like, no, we should. Like, we're here to serve you and we want to be servants. I think there's uh, two things that really hit me, and it's, I've touched on this a little bit with my players and stuff, but it's the mentality that, yeah, I went halfway across the world to Africa, and the things I saw and experienced, and going to villages where people live in mud huts. I mean, I used to watch that on National Geographic, but to realize that this is how people live, and it's not everywhere in Mozambique, but obviously the poverty level and understand that uh, if I could just touch one person's life, just one, like you get overwhelmed with how many people are in need, but if you go and say, hey, today, just one person, I'm going to greet with a smile, a hug, I'm gonna provide food for, I'm gonna give shoes to. Now obviously we were able to do that for many people, so what's the takeaway for me is every day I try to have a just one mentality. So who can I drop a note to today to thank? Who can I encourage today? Who can I help by sending a, a check? If there's an organization in need, I try to do those things and, and not, I mean, I'm telling you now, but I don't, I'm not public about it. I just do it because I'm like, if I can affect just one. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is even when you don't feel well, you still do what God's called you to do. So I think sometimes we think it's all glorious and you go and you do this mission trip and everything's happy and it's great. And the reality is I was on that trip and did not feel well the entire time. And I have very much a team mentality, so I didn't tell anybody what was going on. I just, every day, just said, hey, I gotta get up, gotta do what I'm supposed to do with a smile on my face. I'm here to serve the people that God's put in my pathway. 
and when I got home I got really really sick but that's not the point of it it's not for anyone to feel sorry for Terry the point of it is you still serve anyway you still do what you're supposed to do anyway and that's a good lesson in life because it's easy to do things when you're feeling great I mean that's human nature but when you're not feeling good will you do what you're supposed to do to help another person I think that's the, the two great lessons I learned